Hey, what's up everybody? Lionheart here and welcome to another tutorial in my in-depth series. This episode will focus on my personal favorite shark, the tiger. I'll start by taking a quick look at some stats and its special ability. I'll then show you the basics of using the tiger and the best way to effectively score your diver kills by choosing appropriate evolutions. Then I'll discuss what maps are best suited for the tiger and as usual, I'll include a random match at the end so you can see everything that I've covered in action. Let's begin by taking a look at some basic information. The tiger is a speed shark with very balanced stats all around. This makes it a shark that is great for both beginners and advanced players. This shark's special ability is called Adaptive Hide. When activated, the tiger puts its striped hide to use, allowing it to slip in and out of combat undetected by tracking devices. We'll cover this later in the tutorial, but for now, let's look at some more stats. The Tiger has an average health pull with 200. Its stamina is quite low however with only 100 points. If you were to deplete your stamina it would take 3 seconds to regen fully. Eating 1 seal will grant you 60 health. It has a max base thrash damage of 20 which is the highest value that it can be. Thrashing a diver from full health will take 1 and a quarter seconds. With latency and human error involved we can increase this time slightly to around 1.4. Hitting Steve will do 6 points of damage. The time between lunging and darting is a flat 1 second. A lunge costs 45 points of stamina with a dart costing the standard half amount at 22.5 points. The tiger can sprint for 5.6 seconds before running out of stamina. And finally, it would take 10 stabs to kill you from full health. Before we discuss what evolutions are best suited for the tiger's playstyle, let's jump into some testing so we can see how the shark was designed. The first thing we'll be looking at is the tiger's movement. The tiger's stamina pull is quite low and it uses a lot of stamina to maintain a slow sprint, so lunging will be your preferred method of travel when moving long distances. The tiger utilizes your basic hit and run playstyle where you want to wait for an opportune moment to grab a diver. Ideally, you want to push through an exit after you grab a diver by sprinting while thrashing. As mentioned earlier, sprinting uses a lot of stamina, so you really only have one chance at hitting your target. If you miss, it is best to make your escape as attempting to grab a diver with a second lunge will deplete your stamina quite quickly, leaving you dead in the water. Let's go ahead and take a look at Adaptive Hide. When activated, the tiger puts its striped hide to use, allowing it to slip in and out of combat undetected by tracking devices. This ability has an increased duration with each level gained, maxing out at 5 seconds with tier 3. This ability has a few effects. While the ability is active, you will not appear with a red outline when near a sonar buoy or a flare. It will also protect you from being revealed if a diver uses the sensor gun or fires a spear equipped with a sonar modifier near you. The PAT will still be able to track and fire at you, but it will have a greatly increased chance to miss. On top of all this is its visual modifier. You will gradually become more and more translucent depending on how long the duration is until it runs out, at which point you will appear normal again. Let's jump into some testing so you can see how all of this works. Here we can see the tiger because he is revealed next to this flare. The outline and notification have now disappeared once their ability became active. It is the same when performed with a sonar buoy, sensor, or sonar modifier with the spear weapons. Remember that depending on how long the duration lasts, the visual effect will gradually increase. This visual effect, combined with movement, makes you an unseen, deadly force. Now that we understand how the tiger works, we can look at the evolutions. Since this tutorial is geared towards the newer players, I am going to recommend a build that will ease the learning experience. As usual, I am going to break down my recommendations into three tiers. The early game, mid game, and late game. Early game evolutions are generally your highest priority as they will have the greatest effect on your ability to get the kills you need easier, faster, and more successfully. For early game, I recommend Hangry and Leveling Adaptive Hide. Hangry will regenerate your stamina rapidly for 8 seconds enabling you to spam your lunge ability which allows for a much faster return to Steve's location each time you respawn. 
If you return fast enough, this excess stamina regen can be utilized during your attacks. Adaptive Hide, levels 2 and 3, will increase the duration of your cloaking ability. This will keep you undetected by equipment, as well as obscuring your visual presence to the divers for a longer time, giving you more of a chance to execute your attacks properly. Our mid-game evolutions are Nimble Finned and Powerful Tail. Nimble Finned will shorten your already small cooldown between lunges from 1 second down to just 1 half of a second. This greatly increases your speed when traveling long distances, and when combined with the next evolution, will allow you to grab a diver and disappear before anybody knows what happened. Powerful Tail will allow you to lunge or dart while thrashing a diver. This is incredibly powerful and is arguably the most important talent for this type of hit and run shark. When used properly, it should be able to remove you from any harm once you have grabbed a diver. Note that it may take some time when learning to aim while thrashing as you will be moving your camera around. Our late game evolutions are designed to handle the stronger weapons and equipment that divers will have purchased by then. This is Adrenal Glands. Adrenal Glands will give you large boosts of stamina upon taking any damage. This will increase your room for error when learning the tiger by allowing you an extra lunge if you missed your exit while thrashing and lunging. This extra stamina, combined with our special ability, should let you slip away from combat relatively easily when executed properly. These evolutions should help you learn the basic playstyle of the tiger shark. As you become more experienced, I recommend switching up the order of some of these evolutions or mixing in different ones. The tiger is a very versatile shark and can be adapted to many different playstyles. Have fun finding out what works best for you. Let's talk about the maps. As stated earlier, the tiger is a very balanced shark. Add an adaptive hide and you have yourself a shark that can handle any map. The tiger will however favor open water and medium to large sized rooms thanks to its size and speed. You will want to keep an eye out for areas with very small entrances or limited entrances in general as you will need to execute your hit and runs properly and those will add some difficulty if you're inexperienced. The darker the area the better as it will help obscure you when you have your cloak activated making you very hard to see. Any shark can be used on any map to reach a certain degree of success but you should be fine when playing these maps as the tiger. Fractured, Cove, Antiguo, and Crude. That's it for the tutorial part of the video. I hope that all of the information I covered was useful and will help you on your journey to mastering the basics of the Tiger Shark. If you've enjoyed the video, please remember to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe for more depth tutorials and other gameplay. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in game. Little good luck have Finn, same as always. Wish more people actually did that. Looking at her divers here and I'm not seeing anything that I'm worried about. Especially not a DPV. This is a great map for DPV. The water's very clear. You can easily chase the sharks down. There's not actually that many hiding places outside of the caves. We're going to go ahead and prep all the walls in here. I do this for a couple of reasons. Uh, one of the main ones is just because on this map in particular, I'm in no hurry to get to that first safe room. There's not a lot of gold inside of it and the divers will not venture outside whatsoever. We're also gonna prep this right here. We're not gonna uh, completely break it because it would take too long. We're just gonna get a couple hits on each section and then uh, after we respawn, we'll come back and finish it up. Uh, we've given these divers enough time to hang out by themselves. Let's see what we can do here partners in so we're gonna sneak in from behind should get this easy kill here and here's the second reason why I prepped the walls that wall was nice and open made a nice easy exit for me I didn't have anything to worry about there another hit and run right here and we can go ahead and heal up my partner's probably gonna go do the same there so we'll just hold off for a little bit if I get my big old fat shark butt through here Alright, let's see if we can sneak up on these guys back here. Nope, nope. Mm. I spent way too much stamina sprinting after them. I wasn't able to get away after I lunged. That's, uh, that's mistake number one. Don't ever do that as a tiger shark. It's okay though. You know, I needed to die. Spend some, spend some points here. And Steve's almost done in there, so we're going to finish this uh, prep work up. And then as soon as we get back, we should be able to get behind them right as they're leaving. Get an easy kill. We only have a small lead right now, but save two for this map is where you're going to do most of that ticket damage. Alright, 
Yeah, just grab it. Yep. A little extra flare there. Let's just sit up here and wait and see where everyone's at. We just grab the guy that's the furthest away from the rest of the group right here. Down through the trench. A couple shots fired at me, so we're going to go a little bit of extra. We'll heal up and head back. Uh, like I was saying, uh, save two on this map, one, especially once you have it all prepped. It's just easy pickings. They're literally just sitting out here like this. Oh, we missed. Let's go. Let's go. If I tried to turn back there and hit them, I would have done the same mistake that I did earlier. I'd have the diver, but no stamina to get away. If you miss, just keep going. Come back. Turn around. All right, once again, the guy that's furthest away from everybody. Let's head up here. Oh, I'm bleeding, so I gotta stop for a second. Uh, there's no way he followed me, though. We're good. Go ahead and heal back up, and then we'll head back. Now, let's just go ahead and prep this while we're here. This is for the next safe area, safe three. Wait for our partner. He's ready. Let's go. Oh, we missed. He's here though, so we don't have to turn around for this one. No. Uh, there are a few circumstances where it's okay if you miss your diver to. Is, did he kill him? Yeah, he killed him. Oh, not this guy though. Nice. Is that guy? Yeah, yeah, he's peeking. He's peeking. He's right there. He's away from his group. There's only two alive. It's okay to jump in. And then we'll go back out the way we came in instead of pushing forward. If we had pushed forward, the other diver would have been there, plus possibly some respawns. Whenever you're grabbing your diver and lunging away, always try to lunge away from other divers. It's best to go through the exit you came in sometimes. Oh, oh I missed, I missed. Bleeding, bleeding, don't follow me, don't follow me, don't follow me. I thought you didn't follow me. Uh, like I was saying, sometimes it's best to go through the same exit that you came in. You don't always have to keep going forward or, you know, turn left or right or anything like that. Any exit will do, as long as you know which one you're going to use ahead of time. Alright, let's just go ahead and grab this shark shield here. Oh, we get a diver too. What about this guy? Can we? Yep, yep, yep. Diver number two. No. Just barely missed him. The one time they actually uh, aggressively followed me. Got a lot of points to spend here, so we're just going to go ahead and grab Nimble Fin, Powerful Tail, and Hangry. I'm not going to get that last point of um, Adaptive Hide. I'm really not going to need it. Now that we have Powerful Tail, we should be able to get these kills pretty easily while they're all sitting in the middle of the room, or I can die. Um, like I was saying, Powerful Tail, uh, everybody on this map, especially once you prep the walls and everything's open, they sit right in the center of each of these caves, so you really gotta get in and out pretty quickly. Uh, if you slow down in the middle, you're gonna get caught. So, there. See, that was a much better example right there. I only took one hit. Give me bleed. Alright. Oh, we should be able to clear them out here. We'll little synchronized attack. Let's go ahead and turn back around. And up through the top. Nice, easy triple there. Didn't even take that much health. I probably could have grabbed that last guy, to be honest. He was the only one still in there. But we're not going to try hard. Just grab this guy who's in front by himself. The divers are taking a long time in between each respawn. That's definitely not something. Uh, it's definitely not something that you want to do. It leaves your teammates by themselves, and that's why they're such easy pickings. Oh, P -A -T -P -A -T -P. No, I knew I was dead there after they all finally respawned in. I tried to at least take out that PAT for my partner, but obviously that didn't work out. We're just gonna grab Blood Feast because there's only a couple of them left. I don't want to spend a lot of time uh, going for seals. Oh no 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 no! And I'm good. Good. Little Blood Feast seal right here. There aren't any seals on this side of the map. They don't have that many tickets left. Like I said, I'm not going to go grab seals. Just go ahead and take out this shark shield for our partner. Or he can get it, and I'll grab the diver. Let's hide. Barely made it out alive there. Blood Feast healing me up. Should be able to get another kill. Nice. Blood Feast healing me back up. Such a luxury talent. It's so good to have. The PAT's missing me because I have Adaptive Hide. Partner should have the last kill, and we're good to go. GG's. Now, there are a couple of different playstyles and evolution builds for the Tiger Shark. This particular one, I felt, is the easiest way to learn the Tiger Shark, so I'm including it at the end of the tutorial. Uh, just a couple of things to keep in mind, especially when you're first learning how to do the hit and runs. You can't be too passive. You can't sit back the entire time waiting for that one diver to stray a little bit further away from the group. 
That's going to make your partner a little upset if he's going in every time trying to do all the work. It's 9 times out of 10, 4v1 is not going to work out too well for the Shark. If you are the more aggressive style of a player, you're going to do great on every map. If you are very passive, though, you're going to have to figure out which maps are best for you. You're going to have to look for the ones that allow you to utilize that play style effectively. Tiger has a lot of different play styles. It's going to take a little bit of practice, some experience to figure out which one you like the most. But honestly, I think you're going to have a lot of fun with this shark. I know I do.